Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I would like to continue talking about circles, about small theorems, mini theorems, um, which, which are plenty. All of them um, serve only one purpose, to train your brain to do certain creative things, uh, invent certain additional uh, constructions which you should really make to, to prove your point or to reduce maybe your more complicated task to uh, some you know, more uh, manageable, smaller, smaller tasks. Which is a great feature, by the way, which you can use anywhere in, in your practical life. So, um, brain exercises to continue. Uh, okay, this is a series number three uh, among many theorems about circles. All right, prove that the shortest distance between two circles lying outside of each other is the segment between, the, uh, between them lying on the line connecting their centers. Okay, so you have two circles outside of each other. These are centers, M and N. So, what I am trying to prove is that the shortest distance between these two circles is this particular segment, which is obtained by connecting the centers, and these are intersections of this center line with both circles. So, first of all, before actually addressing this particular problem, I would like to say a couple of words about something which I was just using, the terminology, distance between circles. Well, it's not, you know, easy to, to talk about distance about uh, between different uh, objects if we don't define it, right? Have we defined it before? Well, inadvertently, we probably did. However, uh, I think it makes sense to, to repeat this generalized approach to distance. If you have two different geometrical figures, each one of them basically is a set of points. Now, you can always choose a point on or inside or wherever of one object and another point uh, from another set of points. So there is a distance between pair of points, one point being a member uh, an element of one set and another point being an element of another set. Now, the distance between two different geometrical objects, which are two different sets of points, is the minimum which you can find, if you can, of this particular distance. So if there is such a thing as a pair of points, let's say this and this, such that the distance between these two points is less than or equal than any other distance of any other pair of points, then this distance is called the distance between objects. So in this particular case, to prove that the shortest distance is between A and B, all I have to do is prove that if I will take any other two points, one belonging to one circle and another belonging to another circle, then the distance would be greater. And quite frankly, it's very easy to prove. Let's consider you have two points, one here, C, and another here, D. And let's consider this distance from C to D. Now, I would like to prove that CD is greater than AB. How? Simple. Again, connect with the center, and you know that MC plus CD plus DN, which is an angular connection between M and N, is greater than MA plus AB plus BN. 
because this is a straight line and this is angular connection. Now, if you consider these two, MC is a radius, MA is a radius, MC and MA. So they can go out from this inequality. Same thing, DN and BN. DN and BN. They are congruent to each other. They're both radiuses of a small circle. And what's left? CD greater than AB. CD greater than AB. And that's what's necessary to do. So, what's the most important part? Well, you connect the endpoints to a center and use um, an extension to a triangle inequality which says that any angular line is connecting two points is longer than the straight line which connects these two points. Simple, isn't it? Next. Given two circles with centers at points P and Q intersecting each other. Okay. Now we have intersecting circles. P and Q intersecting at B and B prime. Okay. Draw two seconds that contain point B of intersection, but do not contain B prime. Okay, so two seconds. One parallel to PQ. So we have a PQ, a center line between two now, one second is parallel. It, it goes through B, parallel to the center line. This is one second. OK. Uh, a and C. OK, so A, B, C is a straight line it goes through this intersection of two circles and it's parallel to PQ. AC is parallel to PQ. Okay. Then let's have any other second which is not parallel. Let's say this one. D, E. Okay. Proof that the segment AC is longer than D, E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what should we do now? Well, let's draw perpendiculars. Whenever you have a chord, uh, most likely you have to drop a perpendicular from a center to this chord. So let this be letter K, and this would be letter L. Let's put it on the top so it doesn't really confuse us. Okay. And as you know, every radius which is perpendicular to a chord, divides it in half. So basically, right from here, I can tell you that the KL is equal to half AC. Why? Because this KB is half of this piece, and VL is half of this piece, BC. So that's why if you add these two to get KL, you will have half of AC. Now, if I will do exactly the same thing with this particular uh, chord, DBE, um, call it M. I'd like to use the same letters I'm using on the on the web so you will not get confused. Right. So for the same reason 
MN measures half of the DE. Why? Because MB is half of the DB and BN is half of the DE. Now, instead of comparing AC and DE, I can compare their halves, KL and MN. Right? Am I right with numbers? Okay. Now, now what's interesting is that this half of the AC, which is KL, because AC is parallel to PQ, KL is equal to PQ, since KL QP is rectangle, right? So PQ and KL are the same. So instead of comparing KL to MN, I can compare PQ and MN. And basically this is already done, because if you will consider what MN QP is, let me just draw it again, MN perpendicular, perpendicular, Q, P. All right? Now, M and N, uh, MP and MQ are parallel to each other because they're both perpendicular to the same DE. So these are parallel. So this is a trapezoid just moved on the side, right? So this is a trapezoid. Now, MP and MQ are parallel and MN is a mutual perpendicular. Now, you know that between two parallel lines, perpendicular is the, the shortest distance, the shortest, shortest segment which connect, connects point from here to here. That's why MN is less than PQ. PQ is not perpendicular to these points. I mean, maybe if I will put it this way, it would be easier. These lines are parallel. This is MQ. This is PM. All right, I just turned it sideways. Two parallel lines, and obviously the mutual perpendicular is the shortest distance. That's why, uh, that's why we have this inequality between between PQ and MN. So PQ is greater than MN. KL, therefore, is greater than MN. And KL is half of the AC, which means AC is also greater than GE, which is twice as big as MN. OK, that's it. Given a point P outside of a circle with a center O and two tangents from it to a circles. Okay. Uh, whenever we are talking about tangents, we are talking about perpendicular radiuses to the point of touching. Tangency, point of tangency. A, B, and this is O. So, PA and PB are two tangents. Uh, I draw OA and OB because I definitely know it will be necessary to do because whenever you talk about tangents, you talk about radiuses which are perpendicular to them. So, prove that segments AP and BP are congruent. AP and BP. <coughs> I don't know. Looks quite obvious. Obviously, you have to consider these two right triangles with a common hypotenuse. Now, these are right because these are right angles, and these are two radiuses. So you have hypotenuse, 
common and radio, uh, two casualty are equal to each other, congruent to each other. In the right triangle, that's sufficient for uh, congruency of the other packages. That's it. That's a simple thing. Number four, given two circles with only one point of intersection that is tangential to each other. So we have two circles which are tangential to each other. So as you see, not only the line can be tangent to a circle, a circle can be tangent to a circle. And the definition is exactly the same. The line is called tangent if it has only one common point, one point of intersection. And the circle is also called tangent to another circle if they have only one point of intersection. So if they are far from each other, there are no intersections. If they are touching each other, tangent to each other, there is one point of intersection. And if they are even closer, you will have two points of intersection, obviously. All right. Two circles, one point of intersection, called P, I'm sure we will have to connect the centers. OK. Um, now, how many different lines exist which are tangent to both? Circles. Well, obviously, this one. This is one. This is another. And obviously, in between, there is another one. So this line is also tangent to both, as well as this, as well as this. So there are three different lines which are tangent. Each one of them is tangent to both circles. This one in between the circles, and these two lines uh, are touching the circles on one side. All right. <coughs> so. OK, we can call this one interior and these two exterior uh, tangents, but it doesn't really matter. Prove that interior tangent divides in half segments of the exterior. Uh -huh. So we have to prove that this interior uh, tangent divides segments AB and CG in half. So I have to prove that these two are equal and these two are equal. Now, uh, quite frankly, it's very easy. I have just proved the in, 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 in the previous task, the previous problem, that if you have a point and two tangent to the same circle, then these segments have the same lengths, right, from the congruency of these triangles. So let's consider point M. Well, obviously, MA and MP are two tangents which are originated at point M, and that's why AM is equal to MP. Similarly, since MP is also a tangent to this particular circle, MP is equal to MB. So that's why AM and MB are the same. Similarly, from the point N, we originate one tangent and another tangent. So these two uh, segments are the same. And we originate these two tangents to this circle. And that's why 
Pn is equal to Nd. And that's why Cn and Nd also are congruent to each other. So each segment between the points of uh, tangency um, is divided by half uh, by the interior tangent. Next, given two circles with centers M and N outside of each other and two lines each tangential to both circles. Okay. A and B, C and D. Okay, so we have two circles. We have two tan tan tangents. M, N, A, B, C, D. When you have two circles, most likely you will have to connect them. The centers. Go we'll see. Okay. Prove that segments A, B, and C, D are congruent. A, B, and C, D are congruent. Okay. Well, let's do it this way. If this is not a circle, but a point, let's consider this is a point, like this one. Then we know that these segments are the same, right? So, if you consider this, point P. We know that AP and CP are the same because it's two different tangents originated from the same point P. AP is AP is equal to CP. At the same time, let's consider this circle and the same point P. Obviously, BP is equal to DP. Now, what AB is? AB is AP minus BP. And CG is equal to CP minus DP. But since AP and CP are the same, and BP and DP are also the same, then the differences will be the same. That's why A, B, and C, D are the same. By the way, that's not exactly the, the proof which I have put on the web. Uh, so uh, this one just came to my mind right now. Uh, it, it seems to be easier than the way how I proved it on the web. But both uh, uh, proofs are quite rigorous, so it's interesting actually to compare this one to the one which I have on the web. All right? Easy. That's easy. As you see, all our theorems are really easy if you know how to approach them. And how to know how to approach them? Well, the more you solve, <laughs> the, more, the, the more you prove, uh, the better you will be to basically uh, you know, come up with whatever the idea uh, is necessary to, to prove this particular theorem or, or that. As you see, whenever, for, for instance, Whenever I draw a tangent, I immediately draw a radius to a point of tangency. Why? Because all the theorems and all the problems are about this particular perpendicularity of the radius to the point of tangency. If you have two circles, most likely you have to connect them, uh, connect their centers. Maybe not, but it's always something which you have already done before. That's why it's very important to go through as many problems like this as possible, because it will inculcate in your mind the approach you can, you can take. If the same thing is working in 10 different cases, probably it will work in 11th as well. All right. Um, G 
given two circles tangential to each other at point K and exterior common tangent that touches at A and B. Okay, so one circle and tangential another circle. And we have this point K. And then we have an exterior tangent. These are perpendicular radiuses to the points of tangency. A, K, B, A, B proves that A, K, B is the right angle. A, K, B is right angle. Hmm. This is not obvious, by the way. I mean, if all other theorems were more or less obvious, the fact that this is the right angle is not that obvious, mind you. Now, <coughs> how can we solve it? Um, well, something which immediately comes to my mind is, if you remember, we had the theorem that if you have a tangent and a chord which is uh, originated at the point of tangency, then the, this angle is half of this angle. Remember that, right? It's one of these previous theorems which I have proven. So, what does it mean? Well, it means that yeah, I think it will work. Again, it's not exactly the way how I put it on the web, but it looks like it might actually work. So, let's put this angle, let's call it alpha, and this angle, let's call it beta. So alpha is one half of angle A M K. Right? A M K. It's a central angle which is supported by the same arc as this chord, which is originated at the point of tangency. Similarly, beta is equal to one half of B and K. Now, if you add them together, you have alpha plus beta is equal to one half of A and K and B and K. Now, but these are supplemental angles, right? Because these lines are parallel. So it's like interior one-sided with these two parallels and MN as a transversal. So their sum is 180 degrees. So we have 90 degrees. So alpha plus beta is 90. But now, AKB is a triangle, and triangle has 180 degrees as the sum of all triangles. So what's left for AKB? Well, 180 minus alpha, minus alpha minus beta, which is 90. So AKB equals 90 degrees. Uh, it's not the way how I put it on the web. It's a different uh, proof here. And again, this one just came to my mind because I realized immediately that uh, we were actually uh, uh, talking about this theorem that an angle between a chord uh, and, uh, and the tangent uh, where, the, where the chord has an end point is actually measured half of the corresponding central angle. And that's immediately going into this particular theorem. 
Well, it's interesting how different proofs are coming to mind when you are, you know, doing it two or three different times, the same thing. So first I was doing it for the web, and I just came up with this list of, prog uh, list of problems and, uh, and solutions. And then, as I'm explaining, some other idea comes to my mind. And, and that's what makes the whole thing actually a very creative process. All right. <clears throat> OK. Um, given a circle and a point M outside. Circle and point M outside. From M, draw two tangents, MA and MB. MA and MB. All right. On a smaller arc between A and B, choose any point C and draw a tangent. Point C and tangent. Any point C on a smaller arc, which is closer to him. It intersects at D and E other tangent. So this tangent intersects these two tangents at points D and E. Prove that perimeter of triangle DEM D E M perimeter of this triangle is independent of the position C on the arc. So no matter which point C we will take, perimeter of this triangle, DEM, would be the same. Um, yeah, well, look, it's obvious. <laughs> From D, you have two different tangents, DA and DC, which are congruent to each other. So these two segments are equal. Similarly, from E, you have this segment equal to this segment. So perimeter of D, M, E is equal to D, M, E, perimeter of triangle. Let's put it this way. Perimeter of triangle D, M, E is equal to MD plus DC plus CE and plus EM. But DC is equal to DA, so let's substitute DA. And CE is equal to EB. B, E. Right? We substituted DC for DA, DC, DA, and CE, BE. Well, obviously, MD plus DA is MA, and BE plus EM is BM. And this is a sum of these two things completely independent of the position of the C. Yeah, that's like this. I didn't even have to draw any additional lines or anything. It's just, you know, straight consideration based on the fact that two tangents from the same point outside of a circle um, are equal to each other. Lengths, I mean. Okay, the last theorem is 
given two congruent circles lying outside of each other with centers M and N. So congruent circles have exactly the same radiuses. M and N and the same radiuses. A second parallel to MN intersects at points A, B, C, and G. So this line and the parallel to this line, A, B, C, and D. Prove that A, C, and M is a parallelogram. A, C, and M is a parallelogram. Okay, uh, let's do it. First of all, as usual, if you have a chord, you probably have to draw a perpendicular to this chord, which is its perpendicular bisector. Okay, how do we call these points? Do we call it anyway? K and L. Okay, K and L. Now, let's think about it. K, L, M, M is definitely a rectangle. Why? Because K, L is parallel to M, N. K, M and L, N are perpendicular to the same line, which means they are also parallel to each other. And since they are perpendicular by construction, this is rectangle. So, K, L, M, N K, L, N, M is a rectangle. Now, um, what's next? Um, for obvious reason, triangles A, K, M and C, L, N are congruent right triangles. Why? Because Cachetus uh, Km is congruent to Cachetus Ln because these are two opposite sides of the rectangle, right? And Am and Cn are radiuses of congruent uh, circles, so they are equal in length as well. So we have a hypotenuse and the Cachetus congruent to each other. So triangles are congruent, which means this is equal to this, AK and CL. AK and CL are congruent to each other. Therefore, AC, which is equal to KL minus CL, but plus AK. So it's K L minus C L and plus A K. Now C L and K A are, as I have just proven, equal in length. So we have the A C is equal to K L. So the distance from here to here is the same as from here to here, but this is a rectangle, so which means it's equal to MN. So AC and MN are equal in lengths and parallel to each other. And if you remember, uh, if you have a quadrangle with two opposite sides parallel and equal in lengths to each other, this is a parallelogram which is exactly what is necessary to prove. Well, that's it. That's it for this particular series of mini-theorems about circles. Everything you can find on unizor.com. Uh, and uh, as I told before, there are certain proofs which are different over there than I have just used during my lecture. 
but it's just because you know something came to my mind and it seemed to be you know quite rigorous and interesting and educational if you wish it's always interesting to find something on the fly that's what creativity is all about all right um, I do encourage all the parents to take a look at the website uh, and use it to basically control the educational process of their children because you can uh, enroll children into certain uh, course or part of the course um, 